evolving through the Cartman drama power triangle of persecutor, victim and rescuer. Uh, the Cartman drama triangle, the visual for it, the triangle can be seen on the wiki, um, if you do a search for that. Um, this is a suggestion for an evolutionary approach as a method to solve or rather dissolve the Cartman drama power triangle of persecutor, victim and rescuer. The potential for a possible solution is seen by giving the triangle itself two more levels. Levels that exist in a second and third dimension making in total three levels. These levels are conditional states that would need to be reached by a natural evolution and not a forced one. And they are shame, empathy and self-esteem. The proposed evolution also requires recognising the influence of a fourth external position that of the area outside the triangle. The triangle, as we know, in the first dimension has the positions of victim, persecutor and rescuer. The fourth external position might be labelled community and would exert a negative influence or a positive influence depending on its understanding and support of the evolutionary process outlined here. Shame, the first conditional state. It's based on the premise that shame is the hidden but driving motivation of each and every triangle position in the outset. Examples of this can actually be found in Viktor Frankl's book Man's Search for Meaning and James Gilligan's essays on violence. These provide, through documented extremes, insight into the proposal that shame is the initial conditional state of this power dynamic, the triangle, albeit a hidden one in many cases but for all positions on the triangle and likely the same at any level of intensity. Hidden shame drives a persecutor, as well as the possibly empathic shame, though often a gender-ridden one, that drives the rescuer. And therefore it is not just the obvious end result that we know is the toxic shame or ind indignation state of the victim, but actually is the conditional state of all three positions. And so shame could be considered the defining initial conditional state of any position on this triangle when in the first dimension. Thus the healing journey for each position is inexorably linked in shame. So then surely it's possible to find grounds for empathy between the positions. Note that if the rescuer is genuinely empathic, then this capacity for empathy may be the gateway to the next level, supported or hindered by the exertion of influence from an educated or uneducated community, i.e. the fourth position. Empathy, the second conditional state. If we can create conditions that allow this triangle to evolve naturally, it will come to the next conditional state, and that is one of empathy. We could call this the second dimension in the 3D version of the Cartman triangle, or the second layer. Empathy is where the persecutor is validly seeking to understand the other position's points of view. The victim also validly seeks to understand the persecutor's point of view and the rescuer is recognising their own agendas running as well as deepening their sense of empathy from the point of view of the other two positions. There are conditions attached, such as every position must have achieved genuine empathy for each opposing position on the triangle for this stage to be fully realised. Not easy, obviously, but it is possible. The role of influence of the fourth position, the community, again, will either be to hinder or to help support the evolution, depending on its own level of education in understanding this evolutionary process. Restored self-esteem, the third conditional state. The third and final stage of the evolutionary process through this three-dimensional triangle is self-esteem. This might be reached using something such as restorative justice methodology. Such things as the persecutor making genuine empathic offerings to amend the harm done to the victim. The victim's acceptance and even forgiveness of the persecutor. The persecutor forgiving themselves. The community forgiving the persecutor. And the rescuer letting go of their need to be further involved in trying to influence the dynamic or be affected by it. When the stage of restored self-esteem is reached for each position on the triangle, the puzzle becomes solved. The triangle would literally dissipate, dissolve and disappear, 
because the power tension between the three positions would no longer have potential or relevance to be able to influence the other positions. So using the three-dimensional template with conditional states representing the levels or dimensions, it's possible to suggest that there is a natural evolution to escape the Cartman di drama dynamic, first through shame, via empathy and onto self-esteem. This is an attempt to bring evolution freedom to an otherwise inescapable cycle, recognising how each point on the triangle can evolve through this process and has to, in order to allow the other two positions to also evolve and therefore, interestingly, together they actually may need each other's support in order to achieve individual freedom from the influencing dynamic. In short, each position starts at shame, passes through empathy and ends at self-esteem which by nature of its self-driven empowerment actually frees us from the inescapable cycle by removing the meaning and therefore influence that the other positions have on us, i.e. they no longer have relevance or power to influence, influence us further from that moment on. The triangle then literally dissolves. The fourth position, community. The importance of a fourth position and its power to influence the evolutionary process should be recognised. This position includes everything outside the triangle and we could label it in a number of ways. It could be labelled community, society, family, friends or even restorative court, justice courtroom. The importance of this position needs to be recognised because without the community or external influences on the triangle at any given moment, being at a level of understanding that is capable of supporting the three-dimensional evolutionary process, then it will likely influence the triangle adversely and force at least one position to remain inert and therefore inescapable for all. There is then an inherent reliance of the triangle upon the wisdom of the community outside and for it to be able to offer reference, give support, provide nurturing and even at times be there to prod the triangle to action. By nature of its external position, it has the power to aid the evolutionary process towards each position's ultimate potential or work against it. Without this fourth position's support, it is likely each position will be unwilling or unable to evolve. The importance of this fourth position should not be underestimated. Further considerations. A question is whether there is a way that one position can evolve without the revel relevant evolution of each other position and what impact that might have if it could. It is likely that each position needs the other two to evolve in order to truly escape, which poses an interesting new dimension to the power that each position actually has in the evolutionary cycle. E.g. a victim could easily remain belligerent in order to exert punishment on the persecutor though immediately we see the position would then switch places in such an instance, and it might be up to the third position, or even the fourth position, the external community, to highlight that truth, possibly at an emotional risk or status cost, i.e. the I further shame, be it individual or collective. <coughs> punishment of the persecutor creates shame in the persecutor, so it's possible that punishment will stop the process of evolution for all on the triangle. James Gilligan proposed quarantine rather than imprisonment as a way to look at negating the reshaming that occurs to inmates and those being punished by the law. Vengeance masters justice will create shame and guilt. It is a consideration then if punishment of the persecutor actually adversely affects the other position and stops them evolving. Is it worth the apparent sense of he got his just rewards, or justice has seemed to be served, that we assume it to be for the victim. Punishment is then actually a false solution, and a dead end for the victim too. Recognising and then understanding shame in two forms, individual and collective, really is key to this power puzzle, and the evolution of not just individuals and community, but the human race to no small extent. History is built on the Cartman dy dynamic and its inescapable influence on people, groups, communities and even countries. There is also a question of how to persuade each position to evolve when large emotional investment or deep damage has been made into the relevant position. A possible leverage might be to show how the only possible freedom from the tension and conflict created by the dynamic 
is through these evolutionary levels to achieve that freedom. I.e., if you stay here, you will hurt forever, whereas if you evolve, you may become free. If this education uses the stick and the carrot technique, then there is risk in that approach, as if it becomes punishment, then the cycle starts again. I would also propose considering something more along the lines of Aikido methods to invite the education rather than to exert it, and that would benefit from further consideration. A common case would be for the persecutor to refuse to consider empathy for the victim. Again, this is a huge area and an obvious sticking point on the road to a successful process, but this document is seeked only to resolve the puzzle and not determine how to get there. It should also be noted that any position refusing to evolve actually immediately becomes the persecutor in a new dynamic triangle, whether they recognise it or not. It would take delicate wisdom to deliver, to deliver a truth of that nature to, say, a murder inquiry, where the victims may be deeply wounded, ashamed against ever seeing reason or sense in forgiving the persecutor, whether they were guilty of it or whether it was a false accusation. The difficulty for any emotional human being or community to achieve this evolution is obvious, especially in cases of extreme power dynamics such as abuse, enslavement or murder. But the point here is to highlight a potential solution pathway. The language of I method discussed elsewhere by the temple space also lends itself well to developing empathy between willing parties involved in a dynamic of this nature in less intense scenarios. Some further information can be found in the comments section on the templespace.com blog on the blog Evolving Through the Cartman Drama.